Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today I'm doing my six-month curly girl hair routine check-in. It's officially been six months since I've stopped using any type of straightening, heat, anything on my hair other than like a diffuser with warm air to do my curls. I did get a um, diva cut a few months ago as well, so this is just a check-in to my routine. I'm going to show you guys my full, not show, but I'm going to tell you guys my full routine, what products have been working for me, a lot of Diva Curl. <laughs> so it's going to sound a bit like a, a Diva Curl commercial, but this is not sponsored. These are just the products that I've gravitated to the most. We're going to go over my current full routine along with um, the haircut and the haircut that I'm going to get. Again, I really do want to go back and get another Diva cut either next month or in January. And then I'm just going to kind of tell you my thoughts about the whole process because going from someone who spent 10 years blow drying and straightening their hair to suddenly not doing that anymore and trying to embrace my curly hair it's been difficult and it's been a bit of a journey so it's not gonna be all sunshine and roses I'm gonna tell you about the difficulties that I've had as well so before we jump into this video don't forget to give this a thumbs up if you like more hair care centered videos and if you haven't and you'd like to I really hope you would consider subscribing hitting that little bell icon so you're notified whenever I post a new video every single Monday through Friday so you can actually see my hair straight in a lot of videos that I posted before June no before April of this year. I officially stopped blow drying, straightening my hair at the beginning of May 2018. So May 2018. It's now almost the end of November 2018. Something that actually used to always annoy me about my hair was that no matter how much I straightened it, how much I blow dried it, how much I tried to keep it away from water and frizz, it would always curl back up. It always curled back. It wasn't the most healthy of curls, but no matter what, my hair always curled. It wasn't until I actually started doing a little bit more research on curly hair that I realized how lucky I was. Because a lot of people, if they spend that much time blow drying and straining their hair, they actually lose their curls and lose their curl pattern because they've just put it through so much damage and so much trauma. But despite everything that I had done, I'll throw some pictures up as I'm talking about how my hair looked before I actually did the diva cut but just stopped using heat on it. There were still curls and they were still fairly well defined they were just fried <laughs> they were fried to oblivion i realized that you know what i was lucky that i still had hair and that i should give it tlc and that i should give curly hair a chance so i decided in may that i was going to do at least one year of no heat no straightening nothing i was going to do my best to follow the curly girl method now, I'm not following the actual Curly Girl method to a T because I haven't read the book yet. I am going to pick it up at some point. But essentially, I'm just trying to use products that are better for my hair and I'm no longer straightening it. Those are essentially my goals. My hair had never been cut for curly hair, so for the first few weeks slash months of me not using heat were a bit difficult because my hair was just like a big Hermione like triangle. I could use gels on it to make it look a little bit better, but there was no getting around the fact that my hair was curly but was not cut for being curly. So that was the first kind of hurdle. I wore my hair up a lot, I didn't really like the way that it looked, and then I finally decided, you know what, I need to go and get a curly haircut. So I did. I did do a whole video on it, I will throw that up in the cards and link it down below as well. I didn't go to an actual diva curl salon. I went to a salon that had like a diva curl specialist and I did a diva cut there. After that, like that was a changer. It really changed the shape of my hair, it changed the way that I thought about my hair, and it helped tremendously. I still have damaged bits down here. You can see where it's blonde. I did try to dye my hair last year or a year and a half ago. It didn't go that well. So I'm still waiting for these damaged parts to come out, but I did cut off a lot of that during that initial cut. I didn't want to do a big chop, so I didn't do a big chop. I just kept it, I think it's only grown about this much, so I cut it basically down to my collarbone. And with curly hair, there's a lot of shrinkage, so I'm sure that if I did straighten it, it would have been down here, but I was determined not to straighten it. So I cut it just right up to here, 
Whereas when my hair was straightened, my hair was like down to the middle of my back. But when I left it curly, it was down to like right here. So it wasn't until after I got my hair cut that I really got into my routine and I got into more products. So let's jump into my current hair routine. I wash my hair every three or four days right now and I alternate shampoos. So I currently, I didn't want to get them out of my shower because they're kind of wet and messy. I use the original No Poo shampoo and then I use the One Condition Decadence. Uh, what I do is alternate out that No Poo. I'm not sure if that's the best con or shampoo for me because I do still see a lot of product build up and I was getting like really itchy scalp and that was one of the hardest things about this was that with all the product build up, my scalp was feeling really dry and really itchy and I was getting like these little flakies and I could not figure out why because I could tell it wasn't dandruff but it was just product buildup and I was scrubbing off that shampoo and that shampoo wasn't really helping. What did help is this. This is the Diva Curl Build Up Buster. It's a micellar water cleansing serum and this practically made the problem go away. So you're supposed to use this not every time you shampoo, so I actually alternate every other wash. I use the no poo and then I use this one. This really cleanses everything. I no longer have any little flakies. I, my scalp is no longer itchy. It feels so much better. So that's one of the first big issues. If you're trying to go curly and you're realizing like your scalp is not comfortable and like you're always itching and you've got a little flaky, especially for someone that likes to wear all black, having little flakies come off was just not a good thing. I'm currently trying to find a dupe for this because Diva Curl products are fairly expensive. So my current challenge now is to try and find dupes for the Diva Curl products that I really like because I'm sure that like, there's a whole world of Curly Girl products out there that can't all be really expensive. So I alternate my shampoo every other time that I wash. I use that same conditioner. That's a really good conditioner. And what I do is I don't rinse out all of the conditioner. I leave whatever down here, you know, from the ears down, I leave that in. I also use a microfiber towel. So I got that from Diva Curl as well, but you can, I think you can find large microfiber towels are probably cheaper, but I use that. I never let regular towels touch my hair anymore or a regular pillow cloth for that matter. The pillow that I have over here is a satin pillowcase, but we'll get into the sleeping routine a little bit later. So after I wash, condition, and I get out of the shower, I actually style my hair up here. And what I'll do is plop my head over. And first I put in a lot of styling, not a lot, but a decent amount of styling cream. And I use the Diva Curl Styling Cream Define and Control. I'm currently looking for a dupe for this as well. This is actually almost gone. It's all the way up to here. So I'm looking very dupe for this, but I like to use a cream in my hair just to kind of soften all the curls and just to give it a little bit more protection against frizz. And then I'll go in with a gel. I know in my Diva Cut video, I talked about how I had the opportunity to buy the gel that they had used right after they did my hair, but I didn't want to buy it because it was a huge bottle. I ended up buying the huge bottle anyway. So this is the Diva Curl Archangel Gel and it's a huge, it's about the size of like my shampoo and it's got a little pump right there on the end. I used both of these products when I styled my hair yesterday. I washed my hair yesterday, styled, and then this is second day hair right here. Those two products together just work so well. I've tried gel by itself, I use a styling cream by itself, but for my hair and for my curls, I really need both of them to work together to give me some nice curls. After I put in the styling cream and the gel, I always clip the roots of my hair up just to help them dry because that's how I get the volume up here. So what I do is I just take a little clip when my hair is still wet and I just clip it up like that. That way your hair is just up and it just helps it dry because when your hair is like soaking wet, it's like pulling on all your roots right here. So if you're trying to do um, a little bit more volume right here, but you find that whenever your hair dries, this always gets really flat, it's because the rest of your hair is pulling it down. So you just need to give it just a little bit of room. So I use four clips. I use two right there and then two over here. And I leave them in for as long as I can while my hair is drying. You probably have seen these in a couple of videos because I film early in the morning before I go to work. So I'll leave the clips in and let my hair dry as I'm doing some videos just to give it more time. Because if you put in the time and style your hair really well the first day, it's gonna look awesome for like, three more days. You just need to do like the work for the first day. 
if I have time, I will diffuse my hair before I go out and do everything that I need to do. But I don't like diffusing my hair until everything is dry but the roots because this is always the last part to get dry, right? So I'll leave all the clips in my hair and if I have enough time and everything down here is dry, I'll diffuse. And I have this like collapsible diffuser. This is my favorite one. I also have the Diva Curl one and I actually didn't like that one as much as this one. It's the one that looks like a hand. So I would definitely go with this one. This is the Curly Co. I got it on Amazon. It was fairly cheap. So I would go for this one. It's also good for travel because it does collapse. It's also just good for regular storage. So you open it up, you put your blow dryer right there, and you diffuse. I like to diffuse on medium heat just to get this part dry, and then I just do cold all over my head. So I'll do like the cold flash just everywhere to finish up the look. That is about all the styling that I'll do. I'll always like put my hair up in different things, but for the most part that is my main styling routine. Let's talk about how I sleep. <laughs> so in order to keep your curls looking nice in order to keep the volume up here on the top of your head you need to sleep with your hair in a pineapple and if your hair is longer I would really recommend getting like a sleep cap so this is my little satin sleep cap it's really cute let me get my scrunchie real quick and yes I said scrunchie yep the good old scrunchie these are the best for your hair they're not gonna damage your hair they're not gonna ruin your hair or pull it out these are so bad for your hair and I had to like learn this. The only time that I will use this is when I deep condition and I'll talk about that a little bit later. You're going to want to stick to your scrunchie and you're going to want a pineapple as far front as you can. So before I go to bed every night, let's see if I can do the sitting down. I do that. This is the pineapple right here. I always keep it close to the front because you don't want your hair coming down here when you're sleeping because then they're going to go really flat. So then I keep my little nightcap and I just tuck everything. Oh, I look so beautiful. I tuck everything in and that's how I sleep. <laughs> So I sleep with this on top of a satin pillowcase because I found that if I sleep on top of a regular pillowcase, this tends to slip throughout the night and it can come off. But on top of a satin pillowcase, it just stays on all night and works really well. So that's what I do. And then when I wake up in the morning, I'll shower. And if I'm not washing my hair, I'll keep this on and put my shower cap on top of it. And then after my shower... I'll just pull my hair out, give it a few shakes here and there, pull some curls forward, and that's that. I haven't really found the need to refresh too much as long as I spend the time on wash day doing what I need to do. Okay, so we've gone over my routine, we've gone over how I sleep. Let's talk about deep conditioning. I never really thought deep conditioning was going to make as big of a difference as it actually did so that is another thing if you're trying to go curly make sure you deep condition because it does make a crazy amount of difference to your hair and make sure you try to do it at least once a week i have a reminder on my calendar i try to do mine every friday or every sunday depending on what's going on that week my favorite deep conditioner that i found so far is again from diva curl it's the melt into moisture matcha butter conditioning mask these I got as point perks from Sephora. When this became a point perk, I spent all of my points on it. So I had about five of these. I've gone through one and a half so far because I can get about two uses, a use and a half out of a bottle. But whenever I deep condition with this, my hair looks so hydrated. My curls are big and juicy and gorgeous. And I've tried some other deep conditioners that I've really not liked. Uh, but this is an amazing deep conditioner. Again, this is expensive. <laughs> this is very expensive. So in my search for finding a cheaper alternative, I actually found a really great one at Target from Shea Moisture. This one is called the Strengthen and Restore Treatment Mask with Shea Butter, Peppermint, and Apple Cider Vinegar. So this actually smells delightful. They smell very similar. Like both the matcha and this one smell like Play-Doh. 
but I like that. Um, so you get a nice big tub. So this is $9.99 at Target, whereas the full size of the Diva Curl, I believe, is close to $28 or $30. Yeah. So I've used this, and it actually gives me results very similar to the matcha mask from Diva Curl. It's really good for moisturizing my curls. This is the last one that I used. I deep conditioned last Friday, I think it was. And I really liked how my curls turned out. So that is something that I am devoting myself to doing more of is just making sure I deep condition every week. Because I did skip this for a couple of weeks in September. And I could tell. My hair looked really dry. My curls weren't doing as well. And then as soon as I deep conditioned, like they bounced right back up. So very important to deep condition. Also very important is how you deep condition. What I like to do is I'll take my shower, I'll do whatever shampoo and conditioner I'm using that day, and then as soon as I'm about to get out of the shower, like, I will douse my hair in my deep conditioner. So, in the shower still, I'll throw it all in, make sure everything is just soaked with product, and then I'll put my hair up into a bun. And that's the time when I will use that other hair tie way to go. That is when I will use this hair tie. I will take my wet hair, put it on the top of my head into a bun, and I will use this to hold it in place. It's the only time I use this, only because if I were to use this, it wouldn't actually hold my hair up because my hair is a lot heavier wet, and this is fabric, so it's gonna, it's gonna get all messed up and nasty. So that's when you're gonna want to use this. Once your hair is up in the bun, put on a plastic shower cap. You can either just leave that on and use that heat to help with your deep conditioning as you leave it on for about half an hour, or you could use a hot head heat cap. I found this from Bianca Renee today. So what you do is this thing is filled with like flaxseed and you can just pop this in the microwave. So what you do is you pop it in the microwave for 30 seconds like inside out and then 30 seconds right side out and then you just put this on over your shower cap so you gotta make sure you use that shower cap though because this is all like fabric so you're gonna stain it i actually have a stain on the back because my moisture or my deep conditioner tends to like seep out the back of my head so i do have a little bit of a stain right there but this makes such a difference because i started deep conditioning and not using heat and it helped a little bit it definitely helped better than doing nothing at all but once i introduced the heat cap the results were astronomical. It looked amazing and it just feels so much healthier and more hydrated and it just helps the mask help you. <laughs> help your mask help you. So we've gone through my routine, we've talked about deep conditioning. I really want to go into now the biggest struggles that I've had and just like my thought process over the course of these last six months. So I'm not gonna lie to you guys, this journey has been really difficult. I actually, part of the reasoning for why I convinced myself to start this in the first place was me thinking, oh, my hair's already curly, like, so it should be easier to take care of it and style it than trying to blow dry and straighten it all the time. That's not true. You're going to put in as much effort, if not a little bit more, giving your hair TLC and doing a new routine than you were, you know, blow drying and straightening it before. So you're not really going to save any time. You're not really going to spend any less money on products. It's, the input is what you put in. So if you put in the time to take care of your hair and to actually nourish it, you're going to get the results. That being said, those results are not going to happen immediately. It's only really recently that I've started to see how healthy my hair looks. And I really have to keep looking back at how my hair used to look to see what a huge difference it actually is and how far that I've really come because by looking at your hair every day you're not really seeing a huge difference but like in the thumbnail picture the picture of me before my diva cut versus a picture of me this week my hair is incredible and I get so many more I've never gotten compliments on my hair when it was straight ever I get strangers stopping me on the train asking me what I do to my hair your hair looks beautiful I get random people all my coworkers talk about my hair and how beautiful my hair is. My entire family talks about how jealous they are because my curls are so bouncy and how they bounce back so quickly because this is only six months. 
people can go a year using the curly girl method and not fully recover if they've damaged their hair enough. So I really do consider myself lucky in that aspect. But a huge hurdle I had to overcome was that I kept thinking that I looked better with straight hair. No matter how pretty my hair looked, no matter how well my hair day was, no matter how nicely styled it was, I would look back on these videos with my hair straight and I would just think, I look so much better there. Like, I just felt like it, sh it framed my face better. I just, I don't know. That was a big hurdle. And it's really only recently, like within the last couple of weeks, that I've looked at myself and I've thought, you know what, it looks better this way. And it took a long time to get there because it I, it took so much like self-control to not just like quit and go straight in my hair because I don't know it's it's a bit difficult fighting against your own like opinions like I think I look better this way but nothing is better than taking care of yourself and actually treating your natural hair the way it deserves to be treated instead of trying to force it to be something that it's not. So that was my biggest hurdle. I'm not 100%, you know, I'm not going to say like, oh, I love my curly hair, curly girl hair all the way. I still get, you know, those thoughts about how curly hair, you know, is a little bit more difficult and how I really wish my hair was straight. But a bigger part of me now likes my hair curly than the part of me that likes it straight. And that's a lot of progress for me. So with that out of the way, thankfully, like my other huge problem was solved by just changing up the shampoo that I used because the first few months with my scalp being so dry and itchy and with getting flakes all over my clothes, I was so embarrassed and it was really uncomfortable. So I would really suggest if you're doing this, do the research, watch the videos, try this, try that. Because I didn't even mention how I spent weeks trying to do like apple cider vinegar rinses and how they weren't really helping. And they weren't really helping because those really do help dry scalp and my issue wasn't dry scalp, it was buildup. Product buildup. So the YouTube videos about curly hair are going to be your best friend. Pick up some books. I need to pick up the Curly Girl Method book and give that a good read. Knowledge is really going to help you out here because I feel like also my big problem and a problem that a lot of other girls going through this have is that we weren't ever really taught about curly hair my mother passed away when i was very young and she had big curly hair that everybody loved but i never learned about that i grew up then in a family where my hair was a nuisance my hair was getting everywhere my hair was poofy my hair was ugly so i did everything i could to make it look nice and to me nice meant straight I spent 10 years doing that. So overall, I'm actually really happy that I did this. I think I'm going to extend my one year deadline, so to say, because six months in is really what it took for me to get accustomed to the routine, to get accustomed to the hair, and to fall in love with my natural hair. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope if you liked it, you'll give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions at all, let me know in the comments. I can either do a follow-up video, Q&A, or I can answer you in the comments. All the products that I mentioned will be mentioned again in the description box along with the video that I did on my Diva Cut. Thank you again for watching, and I can't wait to see you in my next video. Bye.